Hey everybody, welcome all around the world. We are glad to have you here. We are backing up everything. We're gonna talk about how to protect your images and how to back up your Lightroom catalog and all that stuff. This is that stuff that you keep saying to yourself, you know, when I finally get the time, I really need to back up my photos and I really need to get my catalog backed up and I know I need to do these things, but well, sadly now we have the time. So let's make the most of it. So anyway, welcome everybody. So glad you're here. Uh, Eric Kuna is here with me. He's going to be moderating your comments and questions. Yes. Because we are taking live questions. And uh, mm -hmm. we are, of course, practicing social distancing here. Eric is over on a different set instead of something beside me like normal. Uh, Ron is in, a, in, a, in another area handling the streaming. Jason's alone in the booth today. It's a very lonely, scary place. But we're here and we're glad you are too. So... I got to be honest with you. I talk to a lot of photographers all the time about this and I'll say, so are you, are you backed up? Your photos backed up? Almost the answer is almost always the same. It's always this pretty much. I mean, you know, I, I've got most, yeah. Eh. In other words, they don't want to say no. So when you say, yeah, I pretty much got it backed up. So that means you have a good amount of them backed up. Mo maybe most of them, but you're okay with losing that 20% that you, you have it backed up. So that's what we're going to talk about. First off, let's get our photos backed up. Let's get them semi-organized, that kind of stuff. And then when we're done, uh, I'm going to give you a free class as well. So we're going to give you a class that, is, that takes this a whole step further and goes through this whole system I've created for being organized in Lightroom. Today, we're just going to talk about the backing up, but the course I'm going to give you is really about how to organize your images so you know where everything is without having to keyword everything and all that stuff. I've come up with a way. People use it all over the world. It's taught in colleges and universities all over the world. And I'm going to give you that course that goes through that whole thing from beginning to end. But today, look at this. I brought all my drives in. Got a bunch <laughs> of drives here. Some are connected and some aren't and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to talk about basically the first and most important thing, which is kind of getting everything together in one place. Now, I'm going to get my phone out here for just a second. And the reason I'm doing this is if I get bored, I can go on Facebook or something. So I'm going to... No, I'm, I'm actually going to run my presentation off of here. And this, this helps me. So we are going to... Now that that's up and running. Uh, we're going to start with, with storing your photos. And that's, that is a huge, huge thing because... You do not want to store your photos on your computer. So your computer is great for manipulating and stuff and editing stuff, but your computer, whether it's a desktop computer, a laptop like mine, it's going, it has a finite amount of space and it's going to get full. Even if you think, oh, I got plenty of room now, I'll guarantee you before you know it, you're going to be stuck with going, I can't believe how fast it filled up. One of the problems is, is, Every camera that comes out, every new camera is more megapixels than one before. All the raw files get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're just going to run out of storage space. And however how much you've calculated out that it'll be years from now, it'll probably be more likely a number of months from now. So the first thing is we got to get our, our, all of our images, our entire library, and, and it's more than just you're going to run out of space, as you'll see in a minute. You got to get your images on an external hard drive. All right. Now, just your photos. We're going to store all our photos on an external hard drive. How many external hard drives are we going to use? We're going to store them all on one single external hard drive. I got all these drives I've been collecting forever. Um, I've got it down to where I'm using one hard drive. Now, I want to turn you on to a deal. The deal I'm about to turn you on to, and I, I don't get any kickbacks or anything. I just found this online. I just thought, what are today's prices on storage? So I went and looked. Are you ready for this? I hope you're sitting down for this. This is crazy, all right? I found an eight terabyte. It's a lot of terabytes. Eight terabyte, my book is the name of, so it's WD, right? Western Digital, and I've been using their drives for many years, and I've had great success with them. So Western Digital, very popular, eight terabyte. And it's called a MyBook. That's its name. It is, it is a desktop external hard drive. It's small. 
It's thin and it just sits beside your desk. It's not anywhere as big as this. this is, we'll talk about this big boy in a minute. It's thin and it's about this tall. Not very tall, not very big. Eight terabytes. How much does an eight terabyte drive go for? 149 bucks is all. Is that crazy? 149 bucks. Eight terabytes. Eight terabytes. I remember my first hard drive that I bought. Actually, I couldn't afford it when I got it. My brother bought it for me. It was $700 and it was 20 megabytes. And I got that thing and I thought when I got it, first off, how cool is my brother for buying me my first hard drive? I thought, I'll never fill this thing up. I'll be in my 60s and I'll still have, you know, 11, 11 megabytes left. Now you fill that before breakfast with email. Anyway, eight terabytes. Now, that's really a good deal. However, if you think, oh, I don't want to really quite spend that much, you can get the four terabyte version for under a hundred bucks, 96 bucks for four terabytes. Come on, that is, these are crazy numbers, they're just nuts. So there's no reason not to have your images. So you're going to move all your images onto this one external hard drive. And that is the whole basis of this backing up. All of your images on one hard drive. This is very important. This may be, for many of you, the first time in your entire life where you know where all of your images are. So what this means is, <laughs> what this means, you're going to move all of your images from your laptop, from your desktop, from all of these drives that you're connecting, you're going to move them all onto that one drive. And now, for the first time in your life, you're actually going to know where your photos are. They're all going to be in the same place. This is just doing this is a really good thing in the big picture of backing up your stuff. So wherever your images are, you're going to move them. You're going to go to that drawer in your house like I did this morning where you have all these old hard drives. You're going to plug them all and you're going to get all of your images down to just that one external hard drive. Now, I just want to pause for a second there. If you have any questions as we're going, shoot them over to us here in the, uh, is it the Q&A tab? What are we using? Well, well you have on the, if you're on the, our Ustream chat, uh, which um, there is a Q&A tab. There's also the comments. We're also monitoring the Facebook comments, YouTube comments, all that. And uh, as we get later too, Scott, you're talking about uh, external drives. Uh, B&H actually has a bunch of deals they sent um, over that they're featuring right now on Ooh, external ooh let me drives. know, let me know. So um, we'll definitely uh, highlight that later because I noticed right now on the page that they sent us, um, they actually have the Western Digital 12 terabyte drive for $216. So you can get 12 terabytes. 12 terabytes. I don't, no. which um, I could bring it up, but I don't know which one you're on. Are you on one or two? Uh, back into the. In the I'm on, on two. Video control right. room? I'm on yep. two. Sorry, you're not supposed so, to hear that. But. Yeah, but okay. I didn't want to. I didn't want to take over know. your screen, but nobody will know. Anyway. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, so yeah, right here. Um, if you go to if you go to B and H and you just go into their external hard drives, um, they have a bunch of discounts going right now. They've got uh, thirty dollars off their twelve terabyte hard Seriously, drive. Seriously. Right now. now I got to tell you guys, so. I, I don't use twelve terabyte. That's right about where I'm at is twelve terabyte. Yeah. Right. And that's I, I, I'm at about eight myself. That's everything I've used in my life is twelve yeah. terabytes. Like all my stuff is right there. So, wow. So, yeah, they're running a, wow. a bunch of discounts. They also, also have their uh, hard drive arrays. They're running a bunch of discounts. That's if you really want to get up. I'm sure you'll go into some of that a little bit Yeah, I'm going to talk later. about that in just a minute, um, yeah. And then also they're running deals on their uh, USB drives and all that stuff. So wow. definitely uh, kind of parallels what we're talking about here. If you need the storage, B&H has got some big discounts running right now. All right. So. Well, yay, yay, B&H. Seriously, 12 terabytes, ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. But there is a caveat, all right? So think about this. You're gonna plug in all your drives and you're gonna drag everything over onto this one drive, right? Well, what happens if that drive goes down? You, you gotta have a backup. You have to. This whole thing is predicated on you having backups. So you need a backup of your backup. So, because think about this, all your photos are, are on that one drive. You gotta get two. 
All right, and there's, there's a lot of reasons why. The, the first most obvious reason is, let's just say, hypothetical situation, we take the time, we spend today moving all of our images onto this one drive, and that drive dies. Hard drives die like nobody's business. Um, the company I'm gonna talk about in a minute that I use for my cloud backup does a report every year, basically about the health of their drives and all this kind of stuff because they buy thousands and thousands and thousands of hard drives. Uh, in their report, in the last one I looked at, within three to five years, 50% of their hard drives died. Just dead, they're dead. It's no longer useful, it's a dead, it's a brick, I can't do anything with it. That's in three to five years. That's, that's scary enough, because in three years, all your photos are gone, that would be horrible. But this was a more scary stat. In the first year of buying brand new hard drives, they're brand new, 13% of those hard drives die in the first year. In the first year, 13% of them die. What if it's one of yours and all your hard drive, all your drives are gone? That's why you have to have a second hard drive. You've got to have your main drive and a second hard drive. And guys, don't make this mistake that people make. Here's what they'll do. They'll back up their images to a hard drive and then they'll make a copy of them on the same hard drive. So they go, I do have a backup. If that drive goes down, your original and your backup go. Don't, you can't have separate hard drives. Now, I'll tell you, I take it to the extreme. I actually have one drive at my house and one drive at the office, right? The reason I do that is, what happens if there was a fire? There's a fire at your house, your whole photo library's gone. When they do interviews with people after catastrophic events like that, they're not worried about their TV. They can get another TV. They can get another couch. They can't get another history of their family, their family photos, all the photos they've taken. They regret, their big regret is always photos. People run back into the house for photos. That's how big a thing it is. That's how scary this proposition of losing your images is. So you have to have two drives and you have to put them in two different places. Now, we, these are massive drives that you're seeing that we're talking about here. We're talking about eight and 10 and 12 terabytes. These are massive amounts of size. However, even at that, I'm still scared. So that's why I've been using some kind of a drive like this. Right now I'm using these. This is a Drobo. All right, and what is designed, it is designed to back up and do other things. But the thing about a Drobo is this. What a Drobo is, is I'm gonna take off the front cover so you can see. And it's, it's fun to do it like this because I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. So inside are a bunch of internal hard drives. So they're not in it, they don't have an individual case. And what happens is, so each one of these right now, I think that's a two terabyte, a two terabyte, a two, a two. So this is 10 terabytes. What's cool about a thing like a Drobo, I'm not necessarily trying to push Drobo because I had a Drobo years ago and, I, and my Drobo died. And back then they only had a six month warranty. And I wrote a blog post, a scathing blog post about that idea. And I got to work with them over the years. They got purchased, they got a new owner, and I sat down with him and like, dude, you gotta extend this. I'm not, I'm not gonna say I take the credit for this, but it was, I was one of many voices that got them to extend it. I think it's two years now, which is pretty significant. So anyway, here's what, how these work. It monitors, number one, the health of your drives. Just recently, I had a drive go bad. I'm sitting there, I come into work, I plug in my drive as always, and a red light comes on and says, there's a problem with one of your hard drives. It's hard drive number four. One of my hard drives was about to die. The Drobo, which constantly checks the health, told me it's number four. So then what do you do? Well, you go to the fourth bay here, you press the button, you pop out the drive, and you go pop in a new one. You just go get another drive and replace it. Now, internal drives like this are even less expensive than external drives because you're not buying all the hardware and the connections and all. It's just an, an internal drive. They're even cheaper than what we've been talking about. Now, as a rule of thumb, 
I'm not gonna pop another two gigabyte drive in here. I might as well go get a four gigabyte. Like when you're gonna update, go ahead and update. The other thing it does is it automatically redistributes your stuff. Like when it sees there a problem, it redistributes your stuff so that when you pull this out, you can pop a new one in and it'll automatically repopulate that drive. That may take a couple hours to do it, but, but your part is just sliding in a new drive. So let's say that my Drobo, instead of telling me there was a problem with the drive, let's say that it said, you're about out of space, you're almost done. I would pop out this two terabyte, we'll put it off screen, and then I'd open up a new four terabyte. And then I would go to that slot, make sure you put it in the right way. And it's it fun because I'm, I'm watching this on the big screen to see how I'm doing it. And that's it. It'll, you'll see the lights on the side, these little lights on the, on the other side. <laughs> these little lights will be green, but there'll be a red one that says, well, I'm still working on this one. Give it a few hours. I'm not sure how long it takes, but it goes through it and eventually it adds that drive to your mix and you're good. And then you can put the fancy thing back on. And it actually shows you on the back a little a schematic that says, if it's green, everything's good. If it's yellow, it's telling you, you need to add a drive here. <laughs> this one's getting kind of low. Uh, if it's blinking, it says don't remove this drive. Red means you better add a drive here. And if it's blinking red, it means there's a drive failure. Now, how many of these do I have? Two. I have two of them. I have one here at my office. In fact, take a look. This is sad. Ready? Scott Home. Where is it? Right there. I'm looking there at a, in a screen. Look, that's how I know which one is which. Scott Home. Now, how do you sync these up? Well, for me, I drag it to the office one day, I plug it in, and then I'm going to use a program. Now, there's a couple of different programs that are really, really good for cloning what's on this drive to your other. That way, they always stay up to date. Well, my one at the office stays more up to date than the one at home. So I bring the one at home in, I plug it in. There are two programs that I use. Now I'm on a Mac, so these are Mac programs, but I believe that one of them is also cross-platform, which is called Carbon Copy Cloner. That's cross-platform, and Eric is, is agreeing. Yeah, there's a version for Carbon it. Copy Cloner. We've been using that since the turn of the century. <laughs> Eric says, we've been using that since the turn of the century. All it does is when you plug it in, it looks what's changed on this drive. And then whatever, it just, it doesn't rewrite the whole thing every time. That would take forever. It just looks as what you've done. So if you bring it in once a month or once every couple of weeks, it's only going to move over to your other drive. What's changed since the last time you plugged it in. It keeps perfect track of everything. It's, it, it does a really great job. And it's really a one button copy go. So Carbon Copy Cloner, or one that I've been in love with for many years, is just a simple Mac program called Super Duper. Mm -hmm. So either one, <laughs> Eric, Eric yeah. likes Super Duper yeah. too. Yeah, so one. either one of those, Carbon Copy Cloner or on Mac, Super Duper, it's just going to make a carbon copy of this. So what you wind up with is whether you have the two or you have this big storage kind of thing, uh, you're going to wind up with... This thing, I like the big storage because it, it monitors the health. The other ones, I'm just hoping they're gonna be okay. I just, you know, but I have a backup. So if one goes bad, I still have a backup. Now, let's go with me on this hypothetical situation. We have two drives, one at my house, one here. Doesn't matter whether it is a Drobo or a WD, Western Digital, whatever. Hurricane hits, tornado hits, flood hits. Ask anybody who's lived through one of these major uh, uh, natural disasters in the last few years. It wouldn't have mattered if I had one at home and one here. All my images would be gone. They would be destroyed. That's why I tell people, you got to have a cloud backup solution as well. you got to have some other way to where if the worst case scenario. So you're going to have three legs on your chair. Backup. Ideally, backup number two in a different location. But if you don't go to work and you don't have an office, or you can put it in your safe deposit box, you can put it at a friend's house, family member's house, or you can just keep them at home, put them side by side. I would still have them on separate drives. It's not the ideal scenario, but as long as you add the cloud backup as well, then it becomes an ideal scenario, because no matter what, your house gets broken into, they steal both drives, I'm still okay. I got a cloud backup. Now, 
I'm going to tell you about the company I was going to mention earlier, which is called, their name is Backblaze. Again, I'm not a, affiliated with them. They're just a company that I pay. But, but listen to this. Ready? Now, this is important. Not only do they back up your, your computer if you want, but they will also back up external hard drives. That's really, really important that you can connect the drive and it'll back up that external drive as well as your regular drive. Here's the thing. Ready? Five bucks a month. Unlimited. I made it in red. Unlimited. Unlimited online storage. All right? So you, you connect your drive and just let it run in the background. Now, I do want to tell you this. It is not fast. To make your initial backup, let's say that you have, I don't know, four terabytes, six terabytes. It could be a month. It could be six weeks. Now, the nice thing is, it just runs in the background, just uploading files, just doing its thing. Doesn't say, it doesn't, doesn't interrupt your work, doesn't slow down your computer. You don't even know it's happening. But here's what I would recommend to you as a Backblaze customer, a long time faithful Backblaze customer. When you're in that first initial backup, I implore you, do not go click on the little icon in your drive and see what your progress is. Because you're going to think, it's been two weeks. It's probably almost done. And you'll click on it and it'll say 13% complete. And you're like, what? It's been two weeks. Don't do it. Don't drive yourself crazy. Just wait. Just wait. And then one day you'll get a little notice that you're all backed up. But don't check it while you go because it'll drive you nuts. Because it's going to be two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, depending on how many images you have, could even be longer. But once it's done, then it does, then you reach that nirvana of incremental backup. It only backs up the stuff that you add that's new. But it does it all in the background, does it really well. That's crazy, five bucks. All right, so that's why I use them. Now, so picture our situation. We've got all of our dry, all of our images on one hard drive. We have a physical backup on a second hard drive. And then one of those two hard drives, I would take your number one hard drive, that one is backed up to the cloud. You can finally sleep at night. You're actually really, really covered. You got everything covered. Now, let me ask you a question. Just should you take all of your photos and just throw them on that first drive. Let's talk about the first drive. Should you just throw them in there willy-nilly? Just 800 folders, 845 folders just thrown in there. No, if you really want to have organization, I mean, think about it this way. You, you do on your computer, you put things in the right place. So what I would recommend is this. On this external hard drive, just first, just put one folder, just one single folder, and name it whatever you want. Put all, and then inside that folder, put other folders for the categories of what you shoot. Now, every photographer shoots something different. Let's say that you are a wildlife photographer, but you also shoot sports and you shoot birds. So you can only you only have to buy one lens, <laughs> one really really long lens. So what I would do rather than just throwing everything in just to make it easier for you and for you to be to be more um, what's the word I'm looking for organized and it does make a big difference is right here go ahead and put your images into categories. Now I'm gonna go into great detail on this in the free class that we're gonna give you today uh, so that's coming up and I'll go into all of this but these are the categories that I shoot as a photographer so I shoot architectural, I shoot automotive, I shoot aviation, I do family photography, landscape photography. Uh, of course, I have miscellaneous where I don't know. I got, look, it's a picture of my guitar. Where do I stick that? It's not aviation, it's not family, it's not landscape, it's a guitar. So I have a miscellaneous that kind of just captures everything. I've got a people folder, sports and travel. So those are the actual nine folders that I have on my hard drive at home and at the office. And so well, while I make that first, so when I'm dragging from all these other drives and I'm dragging back and forth, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not just throwing them in there. I'm going, okay, where does this photo go? Oh, it's family. Just drag it in the family folder. That's it. 
When you're done, you've got some reasonable organization. Oh, it's a vacation. It goes in travel. Now, what if I have one that I want in two places? What if it's family and it was a vacation? That kind of stuff we deal with in Lightroom. So we'll get, get into that in, in that course. I go through that exact scenario. But for right now, here's how it would work. So these folders are, so you'd, you'd see my hard drive, there'd be one folder, I'd look inside, and it's like Scott's photo library. I look inside, and here they are. There's all, all the categories. Let's say I went to travel. I clicked on travel. What would it look like inside my travel folder? Like this. I would have all of these different places I've been, all categorized. There we go. Now, I, I, you notice I'm doing everything by name. It makes it very, very simple. I don't do it by date. That's for suckers. And you'll see why in that class. I explained exactly why and you're going to go. I get letters from people all over the world, students in schools and stuff. And they're like, I can't believe I was backing up by date. I'm a fish. It's okay. We all do it. I did it. We all did it. It's because Lightroom kind of makes you do it from the beginning. It's like that's its default, like throw it in a date by folder. But if, unless you've got a really, really good memory, the date will burn you. You don't have to use names that make sense, right? So I'll give you an example. If I wanted to find trips, uh, pictures, I, my brother and I went to Belgium years ago. All right, my brother Jeff, we went to Belgium. And I wanted, and I wanted to find those photos. Where would they be? They're on my external hard drive in my travel folder, in a folder called Belgium with Jeff. If not, I can be quite honest with you, I'm sitting here, I did go to Belgium with my brother Jeff and my other friend Jeff, it was two Jeffs and me. I have no idea what year that was, absolutely none. Could have been 2009, could have been 2007, 2006. I really honestly have no idea whatsoever. And I don't like keywording, who does? Keywording's awful. So, but I know where my photos are. They're in my travel folder in a thing called Belgium with Jeff. It makes it really, really easy. Okay, so that's backing up your photos, but I wanna do something for you if I can. I brought a drive in, this one right here. So this is a, what's a G-Tech? No, this is a Seagate drive, okay? And I'm gonna plug it into my computer here. And the reason why I'm gonna plug it in, I'm gonna plug it in a little extra port I got right here. Let's try again. There we go. I'm just going to plug it in. Yep, little light's on. That's a good sign. Uh-oh. It's making a sound. So I want to take my mic off, and I want you to hear this. I hope you can hear that. That's a backup. That's the sound of a backup drive dying. Now, it's not surprising me here in the air. I, I knew it was dead when I plugged it in this morning. I grabbed a few of my drives that I used to use for backup, and I plugged this one, can you hear that? That's not good. That's not what you want to hear when you plug in a drive. The sound of your drive slowly dying. It's not gonna mount. It's not gonna appear on my hard drive. Now, I have two choices. I can try to run repair utility on it. I already did, it didn't work. There is a company called Drive Savers I could send it to, and they would attempt to recover as much as they can off the drive. Eric, what does Drive Savers charge you if you send a... Oh, expensive. It's around $2,000. It's 000. a couple of thousand dollars, yeah. It's a couple of thousand, a couple of yeah. thousand, thousand. It's a couple of thousand dollars. And that's usually where you got to decide, is this really worth so it? So that's where you have that moment of truth. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure what's on that drive. Is it worth 2000 or worse yet? All my photos are on there and I mm -hmm. don't have a second backup. So now I've got to spend $2,000. <laughs> a day you never want to experience. And I've talked to people that have done it and they do. They get back most of, if not all of what's on that drive, but it's $2,000. That's, That's expensive. It's expensive. All right, before we move on to backing up our Lightroom catalog, do we have any questions about anything that we need to cover right now? Well, you know, right there's now? a lot of questions in here. I think you've, you, as you go through it, you've worked a lot. I think at first people were really concerned about, uh, well, where's my, where's my backup of my backup of my backup? Everybody gets freaked out. Like, well, Scott's telling me to get one drive and like, wait a minute, like, how can I just get one drive? But then you're explaining, well, you're getting a second drive. Yeah, yeah I had to kind of lead you down. And the, then the, you lead yeah. you down. So, um, 
Uh, I think, honestly, uh, a minute ago you hit a big chord. There's a lot of people that are offended by your comments about not using dates and keywording because they love their dates and keywording. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like don't people do it. love TIFF. Yeah. You know, people they just love, love TIFF it. Too. And, you know, um, but that's yeah. where you say, like, if you're cool with time stamping folders and then going in and keywording, like, Look, use it. Use yeah. it. It's cool. Yeah. Right? You you got to watch my my course though. We're going to give you this course, and it is called the Slim System. It's my simplified Lightroom image management system. When you see the actual examples of why, and and you know what it is. If you tell anybody, we know this. If I say like on my, on LightroomTips.com this week, I wrote, "Don't use TIFF for anything." Everyone that uses TIFF feels that they have to like defend it now. We haven't used TIFF since like the year two thousand. But there's still some people that is part of their workflow and they got all upset. I got the most comments of anything. Like, I give great Lightroom tips there every day. People are like, hey, thanks. Good tip. Oh, I didn't know that. Wait a minute, you said something bad about the way I'm doing it and everybody got inflamed. But the fact of the matter is, I, I call, even after it, I was calling friends of mine that are top pros, do you use TIFF? And they're like, what the heck would I use TIFF? I know, right? Nobody I know that is a pro actually uses TIFF. But there are people that still, you know, like I'm talking about friends that are pros. I mean, I don't mean any pro in the world, but obviously there's some that do. But there's zero advantage to TIFF. And people will go, but it's lossless. And I told people, use PSD instead. Or use JPEG. I know it's lossless. I, I mean, it, it compresses your photos, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I talk about all that in the article. Nobody reads the article. They skim it, and then they go write a nasty comment, because that's what we do in the Internet age. Back to our story. Well, so uh, a couple more questions. So um, what about uh, solid state drives getting into your mix or anything like that? Or, right. Uh, are you using solid state drives? Because a lot of people are commenting, well, why not solid state? Solid like state that? drives are great. They're just super expensive. So solid state drives are more stable drives. They're, they're better and they're faster. Now, in my laptop, solid state drive, the biggest speed jump I've seen in my entire life was getting mm -hmm. solid state drives yeah. in my laptop. Like all these years you buy these laptops and you read on these magazines, it's screaming and I get it and I go, yeah, I guess it's a little faster. When I put in SSD drives, that was the first time in my life where I saw the speed jump that I would expect. They're very fast and they're very, very stable, but they are very, very expensive. Now, they're less than they used to be. But I can't even imagine, what's a 12 terabyte? Oh, it, it would be very expensive. I mean, you'd almost have to buy like multiple, like one, like, I think one like, terabyte is kind of like the price point where it's economical. Yeah, or, at one terabyte, so you'd have, you're still almost okay. almost have to buy multiple ones of those. Yeah, and, you'd have to buy multiple. Um, Go see what an eight terabyte SSD would be, if you would, Eric. But SSDs, they're great. They're wonderful, but they're for basically Wall Street, you know, hedge yeah, fund Yeah, so why I'm looking that up, uh, this is another, Sandy has a question of all sure. photos. She's saying, I, I save everything. Do I need to cull them down before I'm doing this backup process? You don't have to cull them down. Just don't throw them in one big batch. Uh, yeah, I would say all photos. Photos from your phone, photos from 10 years ago, family scans, anything that you've done. Every photo you have, wherever they're from, whatever kind of photo they are. If they're scans, if they're iPhone photos, whatever. Now, my iPhone photos are backed up to the cloud, but I have 14,000 photos on my iPhone. Oh, there it is right there. I have 14,000 photos on there. So, bang. Uh, but anyway, before you jump to conclusions about the whole name and date thing, go watch the other class. And at the end of it, when you're done and you go, nope, I just love my dates, then stick with that. But honestly, don't stick with it because that's the way you always did it. Because that's what people say, well, I've always done it by date. and I know where everything is. And I would go, okay, what year did you go to Spain? I, I, it was either 2010, 11, or 12. Oh, good, you get to search through all those photos to try to find it. You'll get a whole chunk of your life back if you stop keywording. And by the way, have you noticed the whole world is trying to move away from keywording? On my Apple phone, if I want to see every picture of a guitar, I go to my Photos app and I type in literally guitar, and boom, there they all are. I didn't write the word guitar in there. It's using AI to go, oh, that's a guitar. Same thing on, if you go to Lightroom Web and you search on, Lightroom's, on the Lightroom Web version, which is like means you're using Lightroom Mobile, it uses that same kind of search. It uses an Adobe Sensei search to keep you from keywording. Keywording takes a chunk of your life away that you would be spending with your family and loved ones. 
If you can get away from keywording, oh my gosh, it makes great sense. Now, in the class you'll see, there are people that have to keyword. They have to keyword for their job. When I'm shooting pro sports, I have to keyword everything that I send up. So anything that I submit to the, the wire service, I have to keyword all of it. I have to, it's part of my job. It's part of, the, if you're selling stock photos, but if you're not in one of those categories that I talk about, then you're just doing keywords because you've always done it. There's a better, faster way. That's why I did a whole class on it. That's why it's taught in colleges and universities around the world. Go watch this class that we're gonna give you in just a few minutes. So, and again, when, when we give you this class, we're really giving it to you. We don't need your credit card information. You're not signing up for you know, some kind of recurring payment. Or, it, it, just go watch it. We just made it free for you to watch. It's just free, free, free. Okay. All right. Um, Any more questions about back? I mean, forward? there's there's tons, but I mean, we could just keep on going. Uh, you know, one thing uh, a couple of people are talking about is what about video? Do you have a set? Do you use the same strategy for video, or I, I I have very little video. I don't shoot a lot of video with my phone or with my thing at all. I just put it in a. But you would probably use the same strategy. Same strategy. Yeah. It's just it's just a different file. What does it matter whether right. it's if it's a a video from yeah, Paris MP4 or a photo or, from Paris? You know, or, yeah. And what's nice is like your operating system will show you just the videos. And of course in Lightroom you can say just show me videos as well. Lightroom has a button in it that says just show me videos. It's and a little then, film strip icon. And then the other one that I thought was interesting, uh, Veronica was asking, uh, is there an easy way to check uh, for duplicate files when you're putting everything from everywhere on your one external drive? So basically if I'm moving stuff to one external drive, is there a way to check for duplicates? No, and let me tell you why this is funky. So good question, Veronica. The problem is this, let's say that you go to your camera and you fire, you know, a few hundred images and then an, another week later you fire a few hundred and a few hundred and all, you will have photos that are different that have the same exact file name, right? You'll have images that have the same exact file name but are, are different. And when you get into Lightroom, you'll find that Lightroom will not allow you to have the same image with the same name in the same folder. And, and, I know, and I know what everybody wants because I have people that ask me all the time, and man, I wish there was a way, but something that finds all the duplicates on your drive, the duplicates of the exact same photo, not the exact. There are, are uh, programs that you can buy that will show you all of these files have the exact same name. And then you can see if it's the same photo and how many copies you need. But what it won't do is say, these are all the exact same image. It'll only say these all have the exact same name, but they could have been taken across a, a time span, have duplicate name. I have duplicate images on my computer that have different names, I mean, excuse me, that have the same name, but they're different images. So now you're just, well, by putting them in their own folders, it kind of does away with the problem of having duplicates, but you will have the same fo photo sometimes in, in, uh, in multiple locations. So it's, it's kind of funky. Okay, well, we've got tons of other questions. We probably should move on and then. All right, we'll yeah, see if we, we don't have much uh, time left, so we'll, try, we'll, we'll come back to get some more. All right, yep. the next thing is backing up your Lightroom catalog. Why, why is this such an important thing? Well, backing up your Lightroom catalog, and this is, this is really interesting. There's a couple of uh, uh, points that people get burned on here. So, first, let's, let's talk about one thing. Let's, before we get to your catalog, when you import images from your memory card, right? You plug a memory card thing and you, you import images, right? When you import those images, it'll say back up to a second drive and you can go, this is great, yes, yes, back up to my first drive and automatically back up to my second drive. Done, that's great and it is good. It backs up an identical copy of what you imported. Now here's where it gets funky. You have two drives, drive one, has all of your images, raw, drum two. So then you go into Lightroom and you make all these changes. Let's say that you add keywords and you sort your images and you edit them and you crop them and you do all this stuff to it. All these things that you're doing in Lightroom, they're not backed up to that second drive. All that's on that second drive is what you originally imported onto your hard drive. There are no changes, no edits, no nothing. That's why you have to back up your uh, your catalog. Your catalog stores all those changes. So it's an interesting thing to note that your raw images are, are never touched. They're, they're in pristine condition. It's, think of them as your negatives, right? Like you remember the old days? Remember the old days when we used to make 
cameras with film? It was like that. Anyway, you never messed with the images. You could make as many prints as you wanted. The negatives were always sacred and untouched. Your raw photos are the same way. Those edits and those changes are in Lightroom's catalog only. They're never going to mess with your originals. But the problem is that catalog is just for those images on that drive. It doesn't update. And if you start making JPEGs and saving them and stuff, it doesn't automatically save them to that other drive. So that's something important to know up front. Now, because all of our edits and our sorting and our collections and our keywords and everything that we've done to our photos and all of our photos are stored in that catalog, we've got to back up that catalog. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you one thing before we back this catalog up, and this is super important. And this is something that people will send us questions about after this. So I, I don't know how to make it any clearer than I'm going to make it, but here's, here's what it is. Your photographs go on an external hard drive. Your catalog should stay on your computer. If, if I run into people and they're having issues with speed, the very first question I ask them in Lightroom is, where's your catalog? And they go, oh, it's on my external hard drive. So every time you move a slider, it's got to go back and forth between a hard drive that is potentially probably slower than the one in your computer. For example, I got an SSD drive in my laptop. It's really quick and fast. My hard drive is not. It doesn't have to be. It's just storing photos. I don't go to that thing. It's not like Lightroom's pinging your photo all day long. I don't know if you know it, but you're working on a preview in Lightroom. You're working on, you're not working on the actual image, right? You're working on a thumbnail, basically. So when you're making edits and you're making changes, that's why you have multiple undos, because you've never really done anything. That's why, that's why you can make changes in Lightroom, go on vacation for two years, come back, and all your undos are still there, right? Like when, when Photoshop, you close it, your undos are gone. Lightroom keeps them in their catalog forever. So just make this clear. Where are your photos? External hard drive. Where's your catalog for best performance? On my computer. Now, in the next segment, we're yeah, going to talk about... Yeah, because you just answered like six major questions right there. Great. Just clearing up that issue. And I knew you would get to that later. <laughs> but people yeah. are kind of, you know, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Photos on hard drive, catalog on computer. But you have to back up that catalog because if that catalog dies, it's just... They call it becoming corrupt. If, if you launch Lightroom and it says, uh-oh, <clears throat> this catalog's died, now what? You have a backup, right? <laughs> All right, so here's the interesting thing. When you, make a, when you make your backup, don't make your backup to the same computer. If your computer gets stolen, you're out of luck. If your computer crashes, you're out of luck. So you've got to back that up to another drive. So the same drive that you back up your photos to once a week, or if you're really paranoid, once a day, back up your Lightroom catalog to that separate drive, right? Go back up that. Now, what does that look like when you do? When does it happen and all that? Well, let's take a look on screen. So when you go to quit Lightroom, like so you've been working on it all day and you go to quit, this little window is going to pop up. And it's going to ask you, and, and notice at the top, it says, this backs up the catalog file, not your photos. Your photos are not embedded inside of Lightroom. Lightroom just points to them. Oh, uh, we're going to work on the thumbnails for those photos that are on your computer over there. All right. First, it asks you where your backup folder should be. You should hit the button called Choose and target your external hard drive. All right. Now... I would also throw a copy in Backblaze, right? Throw one in the, in the cloud as well. Or if you're a Mac user, throw it in iCloud Drive or just put it someplace in a cloud. Now, this is another big thing. Do you see it says, also test the integrity before backing up? That is really important. Make sure that you're not backing up an already corrupt mm -hmm. drive. Mm -hmm. So it's going to test the integrity right then and there. And then it's also going to optimize your catalog so your catalog stays running fast. So this is great all the way around to use Lightroom's own built-in thing. Don't hit skip until next week. Don't hit skip this time. Go ahead once a week, at least, at the minimum once a week. 
Now you can also set that back up to be the next time I quit, uh, or <laughs> the next time you quit uh, Lightroom or the next time you, you know, once a week, once a month. Hey, I just want to mention this. I got a great uh, text here. So my, my, my buddy Larry Grace, who is the president of an organization that I belong to and love dearly, the International uh, Society for Aviation Photographers. Larry is their president and a really dear friend of mine. Uh, he just wrote, raw files are like film negatives. JPEGs are like a Polaroid. What you see is what you get. <laughs> thanks, Larry, and, and thanks for watching. Anyway, back to our story. All right, so because all of those critical things are stored inside a Lightroom's catalog, you got to back up that catalog, and you got to back it up someplace else so it doesn't wind up you know, getting lost. All right, now... Here's one more thing. Now, I do go into all of this more in depth in the class, and you're really going to watch, want to watch this class. I think you'll find it super helpful. Yeah, but a lot of people even in the chat have been saying that Slim class really changed our whole uh, workflow, simplifying Yay. it and really like helping them just get through that, this pain of managing your photos. Can I, get, can I tell you what my, fi my favorite comment I got when I first did the class? So I did it a few years ago, and then I redid it last year. Um, my favorite comment ever was someone that wrote me, they said, I just want to thank you about the class and all, and they said one line that made it all, I finally have my life back. <laughs> I yeah. was like, yeah. yeah. You know, for an educator, when you get feedback like that, that's as good as it gets, right? That's why we do it. We have this weird thing that we want to help. And so and that's, when, and when like it works. And like we were talking about earlier, if you are like, I love my system, no problem, well, then stick you with it. You don't have to change yeah. it. But, but I, made that, I made that class for people that are like, my Lightroom life's a mess. And I'd talk to people all the time. I'd be out on my seminar tour and then go, Scott, it's just it, such a disaster. Uh, I used to do it a lot more the other way with keywording and dating, and I moved to this. So did I. Thing, yeah. So did I. I used to do keywords. Yeah. I used to teach keywords. I used to teach. Yeah, yeah, I did everything I by date. When I, I've been using yeah. Lightroom for 12 years. When I first started, that's exactly how I did it. So you don't have to be defensive about it. If that's how you do it and you're happy with it, why would you change? This yeah, system is for people who are yeah. not happy. And, yeah, and if you're not happy, consider it. Consider it. And if you want to get some of your life back, if you want to get some of the time that you were spending keywording and sorting yes. and all that kind of stuff, it, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. it will make it a lot easier. Now, here we go. This is, now, we're going to broach all this in that, in that full class, all right? But it also helps your life tremendously if you have just one catalog. And Adobe will tell you. So Adobe was the first one that beat it into my head. Scott, I know that we give you the option of having multiple catalogs. Don't do it. Just use one catalog for everything. One single Lightroom catalog. Again, I go through all this in depth. But uh, it'll make your life so much easier because you're not wondering, well, which catalog is it in? Is it in 2015? Is it in my 2016? Is it my people? Is it my landscape? Stop switching catalogs. Get everything in one catalog. Man, does it make your life easy. Now, what if you already have multiple catalogs? It's too late for me, Scott. I've got, I, I talked to a woman at one of my seminars and she thought you were supposed to make a new catalog for every shoot and she was a wedding photographer. She had 315 catalogs. I'm like, it's going to be a long weekend for you. But it doesn't take very long to, to do this, all right? All you got to do is you're going to go under the file menu and choose import from another catalog. You're gonna go find that other catalog. There it is right there. That's one of my other catalogs. And you hit choose. And it's gonna bring up a window here in a sec. It's checking for duplicate photos. And then it says, all right, do you want everything inside that catalog? Do you want all these things? Yes. Yes, I do. Then say, okay. You hit import and it adds all your organization, everything that you did in the other one, it just adds it to this catalog. That's it. Now, if you have seven catalogs, you're going to do that seven times. You're going to go and they're all going to be in one catalog. Now, I also talk to people that say, Scott, I don't have a good catalog I like. All my catalogs are so awful. I just want to start over with a clean slate. I just, I just want to start over and then I'll import them all into nice. I want a nice, fresh catalog. In that case, easy. Go under the file menu and choose new catalog. And that's it. You go choose that new catalog. It's fresh, it's clean, and then import all of your other catalogs into that one. Then you only have to back up how many catalogs? Just one. 
So you've got, think how easy your life is. I have one hard drive with all of my photos on it. I have one Lightroom catalog and it's backed up to that same drive. On that drive is everything, all my photos and a backup of my catalog. My working catalog is on my computer and I have a backup on my desk or in my other location and I have a cloud backup. I've backed up everything. I can sleep at night. I know where my stuff is. Every one or two weeks, I'm going to just sync it all and back it up. So there you go. All right, questions, Mr. Kuna? Oh, yeah. All right, we got some. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. So um, I'm just going to start kind of at the top, kind of work through some of these sure. that we've been uh, dealing with. Um, so talking about uh, rather than two drives, um, can you just use Dropbox to synchronize your photos and everything and just spend $10 a month? You could. You could definitely use Dropbox. Depending on how many images, it might be more than 10 bucks a month, though. Yes. You can just spend 5 bucks a month and do it on Backblaze. Yep. But the problem with Dropbox, well, I mean, I, they do have a new setting that makes it better, because I use Dropbox for just moving files. Mm -hmm. It used to be all those same files would be stored on your, on your computer and in the cloud. But now they have a version where they just say, leave it in the cloud and only take it down when you need it. So yeah, I guess technically you could use Dropbox as now, your... Now then, you're never having another backup of your photos. If it's just that one. Yeah. The other thing is, when you do have to retrieve stuff from the cloud, it has to download it. So it's either already going to be native on your hard drive, which isn't going to fit, right? You're already going to be messing with that. And if you need a file from a year ago, it's going to have to download that file. It's just going to go slower. Yeah. Just get a cheap hard drive. Well, yeah, because that's what Patrick was asking here. Is he was asking about Backblaze. Back, back is it also slow when you download images to your computer? It's not as slow because you're downloading one image, 10 images, 20 images. It's, it's not a bad thing. Uh, if you have to put up 1.2 million images, it's a bad thing. But if you're pulling down six images, eight images, 30 images, 50 images, it goes fairly quick. And then Wendy's asking about that same thing. What about using Google Drive as your backup? Again, I think yep. those are good redundant backups, but they're all kind of slow. Yeah, so, I mean, those Dropbox, Google Drive, they seem to all fall into that Backblaze category in your workflow. Yeah. Where it's just, it's another way, it's a cloud storage to do that, but you're still having a physical copy somewhere, be it yeah. in a network attack it's storage my feel, or something. It's, it's my fail safe. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't just say, I'm just going to use Google Drive. I would say Google Drive is going to be my third backup because you want that speed, right? You want that speed. You want to be able to work with your stuff and feel it go pretty quick and all. And when you do need to pull up a particular high-res image, you don't have to go pull it down from the cloud. It's right there on your desktop, especially with the prices being so inexpensive right now. Because there's a lot of people watching here that a two terabyte drive will hold you for the next three years. Oh, yeah. Like there's two terabytes. It's just like way more than you need. It'll hold it. Absolutely no problem. And like and we just saw, a 12 terabyte drive from B&H is 200 and a little over $200. That's crazy. So, yeah. But you got to buy two. You got to buy two. So then it becomes 400 bucks. Yeah. That's why you don't want to buy some crazy amount if you're like, I only shoot. Yeah, if you're only going to have four terabytes. Twice a month. You yeah. know, if I shoot every few weeks. If you shoot every day and you're like filling a card of 32 gigabytes every day, yeah, you're going you're gonna to be needing a big old hard drive. Uh, so uh, Barry's asking, uh, so you're only using two Drobos, or are you also using the West, Western, Journal, Western Digital externals in addition to the Drobos? So no, I'm, I, I'm off the Western Digitals. However, I do take one with me. This, little, this one goes with me everywhere I go. Hi. It's a Samsung. It's a Samsung T5, right? It is a Samsung T5, thank you. It's a Samsung T5. It's a good one. This one is two terabytes. It is an SSD, blazingly fast. Yes. And it's all of the files that I'm working on now. So if I need to take some with me for my seminar or I know I want to work on a shoot I just did or whatever, that's what's on this drive. It's, I drag it from my Drobo onto here. And, and if I'm working on a book and I need, I don't know, a terabyte of images that I'm looking working on, I drag them all on here. Look how small this is. Look how thin it is. It's really small. It's fast and it's expensive. It's really not. What's the two terabyte go for, ter uh, Eric? Oh, um, it's not that. It's not Where's that your bad. name? Terikabyte. Terik. Yeah. Terik. It'll work. It'll work. That's a cross between um, Terry White and Eric. Is of course Terik. 
Let's see that. I could probably that because that, that's a one terabyte there that you have. This is a two. I have a two and a one. This one's two. I used to have a one, and I decided I could use two. So the two terabyte one right now on B and H is three forty nine. Yeah, so see, that's so what I mean. When we talk about savings. SSD drives being yeah. a lot more expensive. Yeah, but you can get the one terabyte for 179 then you can get the 500 gigabyte for right. 109 Actually, that was the first one I had was the 500 mm -hmm. uh, I gigabyte. I actually have this one. I have the SanDisk. Yeah, Eric likes know. that one because it looks cooler. It does. He's a rocket really guy. Cool. He's got to put it on his yeah, carabiner, carabiner and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, for the rest of us regular folks... <laughs> Get I actually yourself. got it because it was cheaper. <laughs> but you can see those. So, to, so I don't use these drives anymore. All these drives, plug it in them all. No, 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 no. It's, it's, I moved a long time ago to that one big drive. I, I was on a GTEC for a while. I also, have, I also, because I'm just dumb, I have a fourth drive. I've got a Synology network attached storage and NAS drive that connects to the internet. So if I'm someplace and I need to get back to my images, I can do that. I also have a ter I also have a Drobo that'll do that. I just haven't configured it. So, so uh, Tom's asking um, if you are using a laptop that doesn't back or does the backup, does it continue uh, when you have an internet internet connection again? So you're moving your laptop, you're doing your backup, you lose internet connection. Does it just yeah. continue to go? No, it does not. It does not go over the internet. Well, no, no. Without an internet connection, it's just when you get back onto an internet connection, it just yeah. When you up. when you reconnect, it automatically does it. It yeah, works. I think that's what people are fearful there with a the laptop is. I'll be backing up, and then if it's mid backup and I go and leave and I don't have an internet connection, it'll break the yeah, backup. Yeah, you're no. It doesn't break the backup. It yeah, picks right I up where it left where off. The, but you're yeah. definitely going to break the backup. It's going to take you six weeks. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to take a month. You're going to break it a million times, but it, it just goes in the background. Yep. It really does. I got to tell you that their software has got it down. I mean, it's very simple because a lot of times you feel the files chugging. Not, not, I haven't with Backblaze at all. So Gary's asking, um, I back up the, my Lightroom catalog to Dropbox. Is that a good idea? Yeah, as long as it's someplace Somewhere else. else. Yeah, if you yeah. got a, a, the cloud spine, you can put it in Dropbox. The, your catalog you could back up to a, to a cloud base to a Dropbox, yeah. to iCloud Drive, to Google Drive. You're just saying, store Drive. that somewhere else so you have another copy somewhere right. else. That uh, way, if your computer um, gets stolen or dies, you got to back up in Google Drive or Dropbox. So uh, Carmen's uh, uh, asking, do you recommend regularly deleting your old Lightroom backups? Yeah, so here's the, it's an interesting thing. What will happen is if you just keep backing up and backing up and backing up, It'll be backing up this big catalog. I remember I got like eight terabytes back or some ridiculous yeah. amount that I've been saving these things for two years. So yeah, I only keep two backups just, and really you only need one, but I'm that extra paranoid. So I keep two. I've never, ever had to use it. But you know, over the years, I've had all of these things happen where hard drives die, I've had cards die, I've had everything die. And so you just get a little extra paranoid. It is not necessary to keep two backups, but it's also not necessary to keep backups for the last three years. Because think about it this way. If your hard drive crashed tomorrow and you had to go to, or your Lightroom catalog crashed or uh, got corrupted and you had to restore, let's ask you the question. Would you restore from the one that you did last week or do you want to go to the one you did last year? You're going to take the most recent backup. So why keep backups for years? Yeah, get rid of those. You'll get a lot of drive space back. So, uh, you know, when we were talking about um, finding the duplicates, right? Uh, so Stefan Bollinger is in here. He's, he's talking. Oh, Stefan, you know. all the so, way from um, Australia. So he was at an interesting one where he said, you can run a scan for files with the exact same time and date stamp in order to take out some of those duplicates. So let's, oh, he that's was, a good so idea. So he was saying, run it for that exact same time and date stamp, and if that's a duplicate file, then the likelihood that it's duplicate is, if it's at the exact time. Stefan for the win. Yeah, that's so a great idea. That's a good, Thank uh, you. Good comment. All right, guys, um, we have 30 seconds left. Eric, what do you got? Uh, well, I got a couple questions on uh, specifically on uh, the Drobo units. Sure. So um, there's a question. Oh, I, I deleted the. Oh no, Randy is asking um, regarding the Drobo units. Which one do you recommend? So there's the network one, the USB one, all those different versions. Which one do you recommend? This one, I believe, is the 5DS or the 5DR. 
I get them confused with the Canon 5DS Canon, and 5 dr but uh, it is a five, I think this one is five bays. Let me look inside. You guys will probably remember because you saw one, two, three, four. It's five different bays. Now, only get the network attached if you need, a, if you need to access your, your stuff from the road. Like if you're going to be on the road, you think, oh man, I need this file and you might have to go get a particular image. Because I teach seminars and stuff, I do have to go grab an image every once in a while. I think, oh, I'd like to show that tomorrow. Or somebody asked in their evaluation forms, I wish you had covered this. I go, oh, I got a perfect file for that. I can go back home. I can pull it off and, and get it. Um, but you can also do that other ways. I mean, you can use iCloud Drive and things sometimes. But eh, your best way is to have a network attached storage. And also that way other people can access it as well. All right, um, and then Mark's asking about the Drobos. Um, big question, uh, what drives do you use in your Drobos? I had a nightmare with my Drobos with eight terabyte Barracuda Pro drives. So do you recommend any drives? Wow, we put eight terabyte drives in there? Yeah. Well, you know what? It's always gonna be based on the health of the drive, right? Mm -hmm. The Drobo is just a box. You buy an empty box, it doesn't come with drives. It's an empty box. You buy the enclosure, and it comes with the software, the proprietary software that does works all its magic. But it doesn't come with drives. You buy your own drives. I guess you could buy drives from them. Which ones have you been in it? Do you know? Do whatever you know? Whatever my IT guy Yeah, Ron, whatever gives Ron me. puts in. Here you go. Use this. Yeah. Well, maybe Ron can jump in the chat and tell him what drives we put in, because you, you seem to have luck with it. Yeah, I never had, I mean, now again, occasionally you have to switch out drives, but it's that it'll notify you with those Yeah, little... this just happened in the last 30 days. I think I wrote about it on my blog. Uh, yeah, son of a gun. I sure definitely put it on Facebook. Yeah, I got a little warning. Drive 4 is going bad. I detected a problem in Drive 4. You should replace it soon. So it takes all the images that were on, four, uh, on that fourth drive, moves them to other places, so you can just pop it out, throw it away, erase or whatever. Pop in a new one and it repopulates your drives. So um, I know we're out of time, but we probably should talk about like where they can go so that we, we have the, your Slim class, so they yes. can go watch that for yes, free. Yes, I think we should talk about yeah. that. Where can they go, Eric? So they can go to kelby1.com forward slash free. So kelby1.com forward slash free. Uh, you can sign up for that free membership in there is the Scott Sim class as well as um, about 12 other Kelby one full length Kelby one courses that you can check out. But the one you really want to check out is Scott Slim class. Uh, so yeah, you can, um, you can check it out there for free. Um, no credit card, anything you just sign up, you're going to get, a, you're going to set up a login to log in and you log into the account and you're going to be able to watch that slim class. It's going to be in one of the uh, courses that you have for free. So All right, I was going to put that on screen here. So it's kelby1.com forward slash free. All right, let me find a better font. <laughs> oh, I had a bad font there. Bad, bad, bad font. And, and as well in there, you can kind of check out the other resources we have uh, for free. With, you know, obviously, if you're a member um, and you're a pro member, you get access to all the 800 plus classes we have, all the magazine issues we have. We have, you know, Hundreds of those, all that stuff. So, I'm now still Scott, trying to get it on screen, now, uh, Eric. Scott's in his membership right there. You can see Scott has a proactive pro. Ooh, membership. Oh, I have a pro membership. Yeah. All right, there we go. Now you can show my screen. There's where you go. Yep. Kelby1.com free. And the class you want to watch is my slim class, yep. my simplified Lightroom image management. Now, I do start that class with a lot of the stuff that you just saw today, talking about drives. I go into greater depth and we go into a little bit more on, on but it's really about getting your hard drives organized first. That's the key. And then getting Lightroom to mimic that structure. And it, man, when you got it up and running, and it's not hard, it's all easy stuff. It's stuff that you can do now while we have this downtime. It's not stuff that'll take you two weeks. You know, can I tell you this? This is an interesting thing, that one of the most common comments that I get from people that did the Slim system, the, one of the most common comments was, I thought it was gonna take me so long, but it didn't take me anywhere near as long as I thought. It went quickly, it went easily. Like, I, I don't have a single comment from someone that said, Scott, I thought it was gonna take a week and it took me a month. It's always the same. I thought it was gonna take a week and it took me four hours. Like it just, you know, and these are people that had a Lightroom disaster, like their stuff was just everywhere. So, you know, so once, the, once they get a do fix, I mean, I, I've gotten so many wonderful comments and it's obviously very gratifying to do something that actually helps. Um, but 
it, it, it does work for a whole lot of people, so I hope you will give it a watch. And at the end of it, you can decide, yeah, it's for me or it's not for me. But either way, it didn't cost you anything, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Any more comments? Oh, Questions? yeah, I mean, we've definitely got it, but I just don't know how long you want to uh, No, we, we can go. go a few more minutes. Right, Wait, so. We're already five minutes over, so you know what the heck. Um, how, Andy's asking, how do the images backed up to the, uh, to the drive retain the Lightroom settings? I was wondering about like retaining they the settings. They don't. You have to back up the catalog. So Andy, your settings are in your Lightroom catalog. They're not in there. So, so let's just, here, let's, let's play out this scenario, right? So all of your images are exactly the same on drive one and drive two, all right? Let's say that your, your drive one goes down. You'll just plug in drive two, change the name to be whatever you called it, Scott's Drive. It'll automatically link up all the photos but all your edits are in that catalog. They're still in that catalog. So you can plug in you know, the same images as your backup. As long as your backup has the same name, it'll go, oh, there they are. Because your edits are not in the photos. Your edits are stored inside of Lightroom. So there's that. All right, so Lisa's very confused because uh, what she's saying is Adobe people say not to have one catalog because that's where trouble corruption happens. Plus, if it gets huge, backup takes a while. So let's for the call past somebody years, from Adobe. Let's yeah. call somebody from so, Adobe and so, ask them right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Because uh, that's what she's saying is she's getting confusing information where Adobe's saying the Adobe's keep the not catalogs. saying that. Now, so you got some wiener on customer service. That's why you should go to, to our forums <laughs> instead of Adobe customer service. I'm calling someone from Adobe right now. Because it, it, I know it can be confusing out on the internet when you search and it's like one person's like we had the other day where somebody was telling somebody to make their image 9,000 pixels, pixels by, by 5,000 pixels. Yeah, and it's don't like be confused. At 300 DPI. Oh, it went into voicemail. That's why you don't call Adobe. It goes into voicemail. <laughs> no, let me tell you. I, I, so I'm going to tell you this. This is straight from the Lightroom product managers, from Sharid, from Tom. This is straight from them. Use one catalog. This isn't from a customer service rep. This isn't from a customer service rep in another country that is, is, a, is reading it out of a manual. This is straight from the Lightroom, the people that made the product. They're saying, use one catalog, use one catalog. They beat me to death with it till I finally says, yes, I'm going to use one catalog. And I'm telling you what, it'll change your life. So Lisa, don't fall for that crazy customer service person or that person in a forum that you thought was an Adobe employee but it really just sounds like an Adobe employee. Maybe this Adobe employee will call me back. It happens. Well, I mean, but I can totally relate because that's where you do the research and you, you, and you get that conflicting statements. Um, and also, you can, if not managed properly, like we talked about, if you don't have it on fast drives, I mean, your catalog can slow you down. I'm calling another Adobe employee. Okay. I know many employees. <laughs> Let's hold on. Let's see. But these are Lightroom specialists. They're not just, you know, they yeah, don't I work mean, on the, like InDesign. Yeah, they're the people who <laughs> the horse's mouth, right? They've all heard this and nope. they're like, no, nope, no, nope, I'm not answering. I'm not taking yeah, that Yeah, none call. of them are taking my call right now. None of them are taking my call. Like, How Scott's going to ask us for a new feature. We're they're not like, taking the call. Yeah, when I call up Adobe normally, they know that I'm calling to complain about something. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, they're like, oh, it's Scott. We'll just take that later. So Carmen's asking about traveling. So what about traveling? During travels, I uh, save uh, my pictures on my MacBook, then I move them uh, back home to an external drive. Should I take an external drive on my trips instead? I do. So I do. Actually, that is the other thing that I use little baby Samsung drive for. So when I go on vacation, when I take a trip or whatever I'm doing, this goes with me all the time. All my photos are on here. Now, I don't carry two of these, so what I do is I do not erase the images on my memory card until I've got two backups. So I take extra cards with me, so when I come home from my vacation, I have a folder here with all of the photos that I've taken, and then I have all of the SD cards or all of the CF cards as my second backup. The first thing I do when I get home is back up those images to those drives, like bang, bang, and up to Backblaze. It is like job one. Now, when I do get home, I transfer those images 
to my Drobo, and then I take the catalog that I was using on my laptop, and I, trans and I, I save that. I go to the collection. Let's say the collection's called France. I go to France, and I say, save as a catalog. You right-click on that collection and say, export, at, export this collection as a catalog. Take that catalog, I go to my iMac at home, that's what I have at home. I open Lightroom, and I say import from another catalog, just like you saw me do earlier. I click it, and there's all the changes, all the edits, everything I did to Paris, and my Paris photos are already on that Drobo. So that's, it's a very, very simple thing when I come back from vacation. I move the photos to my, to my Drobo, I, move, I export that catalog and import it into my Lightroom, done. So we have a comment from Jeffrey Tranberry. Yes, Jeff's an Adobe so guy. He says. He's the greatest Adobe guy. <laughs> so he says, I work for Adobe. <laughs> we do not recommend more than one catalog. We do recommend backing up your catalog often. So yes. that's the key. Jeff, can I tell you what? I'm, just, I'm not saying this because he called or because he checked in, but Jeff Tranberry is one of the best of all Adobe employees. Number one, he has a giant Uber brain. Number two, he is the most responsive guy. If you call Jeff, he gets back to you immediately. Number three, when I go to Minneapolis, he and I get to go to dinner, and we have such a great discussion. He lets me complain and whine, and we're still friends. It's crazy. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for saying that. There you that. go. That's th from an Adobe employee. <laughs> that works in Lightroom all the time. Yeah. Yes. And, and he helps. He is like a customer advocate. Like He's the guy that steps in to help customers, and he, he's he's very, very cool, very cool guy. Uh, so uh, Stephen is asking, uh, what about backing up your Lightroom catalog and photo, uh, with your Photoshop presets or your Lightroom presets, brushes, actions? I mean, does that stuff get backed up, or do you have to back that you up You can separate? store that in the catalog, I believe. Let me go look. I believe there is actually a button inside of Lightroom to store that stuff. Let me, I, I just, oh, this is so sad. Uh oh! I ran out of power. If only <laughs> there were a power cable <laughs> right nearby. In. That, that's my crew there. I got an awesome well, crew. Well, yes, but in all defense, they're not allowed out here to actually interact. Yeah, with we're us. all have to stay in different usually places. Usually, they would plug in our machines. Tape yeah, down they the would cords, run out there and do all do this all stuff, stuff. But right. yeah, we're all trying to keep this the social distancing thing. But, you know, at least I get to see Eric from across the room. Yeah. You know, normally we'd be, like, together on our sets and stuff, and we have lunch about three days a week. But our restaurant, we can't go to our restaurant because it's closed. Yeah. But today they reopened for takeout, right? Takeout. Takeout. Oh, the soups. The soups are so, so good. All right, let me see if my computer's <laughs> got enough juice now. Oh, it probably doesn't like all these drives. Let's just unplug them. Wait, you didn't inject them first. Yeah, I know. All right, let me make sure I got power. Is it plugged in? The strip's on? I got nothing. Well, I do believe that there is a checkbox that allows you in your preferences, and I think it's actually under presets, that you can store all your presets and all that crazy stuff right inside your Lightroom catalog. Jason just came out, and he's, he is close to six feet. We're getting, we're getting close. Jason is just not that important. <laughs> Power's there, but light, my computer's not. So anyway, <laughs> Jason's like, Jason, you're getting back the heck up. Beep, 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 beep. All right, so I got another question here. So I think people are warming up to the idea of maybe I don't have to keyword and maybe I don't have to do that, all that all stuff. All right. Uh, so Landon's asking, does a slim system cover how to convert from date organization to topic? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah, it covers all that stuff. Yep, cool. Because um, a lot of people, I, I would say more people than not are, 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 you know, that's the way when you imported it wanted you, the default was by date, so you just started doing it that way. It's not your fault. It's just that's kind of the way Lightroom was made. From, I think at the beginning they thought everybody would do that. Yeah, well, and that's what uh, I Kim's did. asking about, like, in the system, do you use subfolders? I know you were showing people folders, but do you use subfolders, like, inside of family, inside of that? And sure. Then, and then do you ever get down to date? Yeah. Did you see that when I was showing it on screen? Remember I showed, here's travel, and then you click inside travel. Remember mm -hmm. there was all those cities I went to? Now, the only time I will ever use date is, let's just say that I went to 
Paris more than once. And I went to Paris in 2010 and then 2014 and then 2019. I occasionally will, will just put just the year, 2011. But honestly, for me, I'm better to say Paris with the kids, summer in Paris, or some other descriptor. So, because I don't remember, I, I've been, luckily, I think very thankful and grateful that I've been to Paris numerous times. I've been to Paris, I don't know, 12 times. So, I could have 2011, 2012, Paris, 2000, but if I say Paris with Jeff, then I know exactly which trip it was. Paris with the kids, Paris with my brother-in-law, then I, I know ex those little things that you add trigger things in your head that make it so much easier to find out. But at that, at that point, sometimes you will see in my own stuff, Paris 2010. But I would much rather say Paris with Calibra than I would Paris with, you know, whatever. So Rob Sylvan actually chimed in about um, your catalog. Rob and, um, Sylvan. He's saying you can store them alongside your catalog, but not in the catalog. However, when you check that box, it only puts the default presets and templates in the new location. He's right. He's right. You have to manually copy over custom stuff yourself. Yep. He's right. Rob's right. So, Rob's always right. That's why he's Rob go. Sylvan. Um, Dave's asking, um, how did you decide to use Black Blades versus something like Crash Plan? How did I decide what? How did you decide on Black Blades versus like something like Crash it's Plan? It's easy. Crash Plan does no longer take consumers. I was a Crash Plan user. That's what I used to use, Crash Plan. And Crash Plan sent me a note and said, we're not doing consumers anymore. We're just doing commercial accounts. So better get your stuff off here. <laughs> so that was easy. I just quit Crash Plan. It quit me, actually. Uh, so, um, there's a question I've been following your advice of organizing my Lightroom catalogs and photos for years. So is saving everything to an external drive as simple as dragging the, that drive from my, my Lightroom folders file? Yeah, you're dragging a drum. Actually, I was going to show that. It's not, it's very, um, anticlimactic. Uneventful, anticlimactic. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to plug in a drive and drag stuff to it. And sure. you go through all that in the Slim system. Yeah, right? I do it in the Slim system. I actually yep. show it in the Slim system of dragging it over. Yeah, you're literally just dragging and dropping. Which if you want to watch now, that. Now, the only thing I want to tell you is this. Once you've dragged and dropped everything over, don't leave it on your hard drive, right? Don't, don't leave all those same photos. You've got them backed up in two places in the cloud. Don't have a fourth one on your drive mucking everything up. It's great to know. Where are all my photos? They're on that drive. Don't say, well, most of them are on there. They're all on here, but some of them are also on my computer. Uh, get rid of them once they're, once you know that they're backed up three times, then dump the ones that are on your, on your computer. Okay. Yeah, because the person's coming back that they, they just haven't been notified on crash plan on that case, but. I did. I mean, it's probably because of the level you were at too. Plus the, uh, yeah. it's cheaper for me. Yep. Is five bucks a month is not that's cheaper than Crash Plan. I love black back blaze. Um, there's a question just about like, um, um, do you only use Lightroom on your computer or do you use other programs to keep your fo photos managed as well? No, you pick one thing, just go with that. Just go I with mean, that. yeah, why would you why would you want to maintain multiple catalogs and multiple programs and they use multiple schemes and stuff. No, I just do it all in Lightroom. Lightroom's great for that. Hey, we are now about uh, uh, yeah, 20 we're minutes definitely, over. I mean, we can keep on going. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely been one of those topics where um, there's a lot of questions, a uh, lot of concerns. Um, I think we've helped. This you, is you definitely stuff. helped you mystifying some of the myths there. Um, I think that this is one thing, too, that uh, a lot of people, it, there's so much misinformation out there and overthinking it sometimes, on the, especially on the internet, where um, I think you just got to use a system that's best for you. But that's where you've had really good success with, with your system. You've had really good success with the organizational system you yep. have. And we've had a lot of members have that six, same success. And that's why we have that. If you have a system that you're comfortable with, then you're comfortable with yeah, it, Yeah, you right? don't have to move. Yep. Like if, I made that system for people who didn't have a system. If you have a system and it's up and running and you're happy with it, you're not forced to switch to my system. <laughs> just fine. I just want you to be happy with your Lightroom life. I want you to know where your photos are. I want you to sleep at night. Right. I want you to know that your stuff's backed up and I want you to be able to find everything. And uh, I think that 
when you get to that place, whether you've done it yourself with dates and, and all that stuff, or you're going to use my system, it doesn't matter which system you use as long as you have a system. As long as you know all my photos are backed up and I can get to all of them quickly. And so that's, I think those are the important things, not so much that other stuff. Well, there you go. So, I mean, I think that kind of wraps this up for us here. I mean, obviously, if you want to go see the Slim System class, you can go to kelbyone.com forward slash free. Yep. Um, and then uh, this webcast will be up um, live on wherever you watched it. If you want to share it with friends or share it with anybody, sure. you know, that's uh, as well. So, yeah, these webcasts that you're watching are normally for Kelby One members only. But being as we're all in this together, we're all kind of stuck indoors. We wanted to do something to keep photographers motivated and interested. And, you know, so when we get past this awful virus, that we're set up in, in, in better shape than we were when we started. If we take the time to back up our images and do this stuff now, when this all clears and we get back to work, we got a system up and running. We put good use to our time. And while you're working on this stuff, you're not thinking about all the other awful stuff. So That's let's true. think about good stuff, yeah. happy stuff, yeah. creative stuff. Yay. Yay us. And we'll be doing these every week. So hopefully we'll see you again next week. Just if you want to know when we're doing these, you can follow me either on Twitter. I'm at Scott Kelby. You can follow me on LinkedIn, Scott Kelby. You can follow me on Facebook, Skelby, S-K-E-L-B-Y on Facebook. You can also follow any of the Kelby ones. Follow Kelby one on Twitter, Kelby one on Instagram, Kelby one anywhere. Uh, or Kelby One Online, I think, on Facebook, right? Yep. And then um, mm -hmm. Kelby One on YouTube, um, or just yeah. look at our site. And I'm, yeah. I'm just going to give a plug for why you should follow us on Facebook and that stuff. Every Friday, we do a thing called Photo Tip Friday. It's a real short video, and it's from any one of our instructors. So they're from different instructors every week. Some are from me. Some are from all, diff all of these different awesome Kelby One instructors. It's just a free tip every Friday. It's called Photo Tip Friday. You know what I recorded this week? A Photo Tip Friday. And it sounded like this. Hi, everybody. Scott Kelby here. And here's your Photo Tip Friday. And then they gave a really cool tip. So anyway, that's, what, that's how it works. So if you do follow us on the Kelby One channels, at least you get a free tip every Friday and all that stuff. And you'll always know what we're doing when we're doing stuff and giveaways. For example, um, my editor, Kim Doty, this week gave away some copies of my Natural Light Photography book. If you follow us on social... Yep. You'll, you'll know. You would have known that because they will always share, and I do, I share Kim's giveaways as well. Kim apparently gives away a lot of my books, so Kim must have an inventory in her office that is terrifying. But she doesn't always give away print books. Sometimes it's e-books. Last of the week was e-books because it's easier to get you an e-book right, right now because it's digital. There Mr. Kuna, thank you very much for helping well, us out you. today over thank there. You. And thanks for everybody Way for over joining there. us. Thanks yeah. to my crew here. Thanks to Ron and Jason who came in. So our whole company is on work at home. Uh, so everyone is working at home, but we have to come in to do these webcasts. So uh, for now, anyway, we're all having to come in, but we're keeping so far away from each other. We're yeah. so clean. Mm -hmm. And when you walk in the door, giant Purell. Disinfect and protect. We disinfect and protect. Well, we, we hope that you guys stay safe. Thank you for taking the time to spend with us today. Hope you found it helpful. Stay healthy, wash those hands, stay the heck away from everybody. We'll catch you next week. Take care, everybody. See ya.